Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is episode 33, Restored to Clarity. One of the biggest gifts of recovery I've received is being restored to clarity. I can look back at my life before recovery and say, here's what I was doing, here's what I was thinking, and here's what my motives were. And I can see those things with crystal clarity, but I was completely blind to all of that before recovery. In fact, one of my moments of extreme clarity, which I now call a spiritual awakening, was when I got some real clarity about my part in things. I have this set of defects of character, which I call the cluster of arrogance, where I think I have all the answers. I think my way is the right way. People should listen to me. And if only the world ran the way I wanted it to, then everything would be better. Side note, I don't want to think this shit, but I do. It's way less than it was before recovery, but it does still happen. And at least now I have the clarity of thought to understand that just because I think something doesn't mean it's true. Anyway, when I was doing the steps for the second time is when I had that moment of extreme clarity. This was in a different program than I had done the steps the first time. And I realized, wait a minute, I have a string of dysfunctional romantic relationships behind me. I've never had a healthy one. I've had a 19 year codependent relationship with my boss. I was carrying around over a hundred pounds of extra weight. I had years of alcohol and drug abuse. All of my friendships were lopsided. I had problems with debt for years, came from a really dysfunctional family. In fact, I was estranged from my father for the second time in my life. And I think people should listen to me and do things my way and take unsolicited advice from me. Are you fucking kidding me? Not one area of my life was functional. Even though I looked on the outside like my life was functional. Now, when this moment occurred, I was in my bed doing my step work and I literally rolled back and forth, laughing my ass off, holding onto my ribs because they hurt so much because I was laughing so fucking hard at the absolute absurdity of all of that. And that was a moment of real clarity for me. I understood the absolute absurdity of my assumption that I was always right and that people should do things my way. I couldn't even run one area of my life well, yet I thought people should listen to me. Now, the longer I've been in recovery and keep looking at my life in the past, the more I realize that I had a lack of clarity in regard to a lot of things in my life. For example, I didn't have clarity with boundaries. Either I didn't have boundaries at all, or they were rather blurry because I moved them all the time. Oh yeah, and I blamed other people for taking advantage of me. Now I have a lot more clarity about boundaries. Because I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional family that was especially emotionally dysfunctional, I had a lack of clarity about a lot of things. And I somehow internalized the message, don't ask questions. It was like, you're supposed to know this stuff. And it didn't even matter if I was five. I think for me, the worst effect of growing up in that kind of a family is that I questioned my own perceptions. It was like, wait, did that really happen? Or am I making that up? I had a lack of clarity about reality. A lot of times I didn't understand what was going on, but I somehow knew that I wasn't supposed to ask. I wasn't allowed to ask what things mean. 
So for example, in my family, we would act one way in public and then a completely different way at home, but we never talked about it or some big, giant, huge, awful thing would happen and we didn't talk about it. And I kind of knew like, nope, we're not supposed to ask. So in regard to the acting one way in public and private, I was like, wait, what kind of family are we? Because we say we're this kind of family, but that's not the kind of family that I'm experiencing us as. So I had a lack of clarity about what the hell was real. And because I didn't internalize this notion that I wasn't somehow allowed to ask questions that seeking clarity was just not an option in my family, I went through a lot of my adult life with a lack of clarity. This includes my professional life. So if I didn't understand what my boss was asking of me or how they wanted me to go about doing something, rather than asking and getting clarity, is this what you meant? Or is this the direction you want me to go? I was, I would just fucking guess and, and, you know, just see how it went because I thought I was supposed to know. Romantic relationships were another area where I had a lack of clarity. I remember at the beginning of the relationship I'm in with my current sweetheart that I have now, which is the first healthy relationship I have ever been in. He actually said to me on our third date, you seem interested in me. And I was like, holy shit, nobody's come right out and said anything like that to me before. Even men that I'd met on dating sites where it's really clear we're here for the purpose of dating. I'd never had a very clear conversation about, yes, I'm attracted to you. No, I'm not attracted to you. And somehow that just seemed taboo. Like if we talk about it, that's somehow bad or it would scare him away if I brought it up and thoughts or questions about our relationship were just not an option, at least in the early stages of dating. And my experience in dating was, are we dating? Are we not dating? Are we friends? Are we boyfriend and girlfriend? Are we friends with benefits? And eventually I would have conversations about exclusivity. But in the beginning, it was this whole weird thing where I didn't know where we stood. And I was somehow waiting for him to make some kind of declaration as if I didn't have any say in the matter, which by the way, I didn't because I didn't think that it was an option. So in reality, I didn't. And that's how clouded my thinking was. I was in the relationship, yet I didn't think I got to have a say about it. Now that I'm in recovery, the lack of clarity is just intolerable for me. I had a very high tolerance for chaos and dysfunction in my life before recovery because I didn't know any different. But now that I'm in recovery, I can't tolerate chaos and dysfunction. I steer clear of it whenever possible. And one of the ways I see chaos and dysfunction appearing is through lack of clarity. So now when I'm not clear about something, I actually ask for clarification. I just didn't even know that was a thing before recovery. I really thought this is how life is. I assumed we're actually, I don't even think I assumed because this was so conscious that I don't even know if you could call it an assumption, but I assumed everybody walked around with a lack of clarity and some people were just better at managing or something like that. I don't think there was really a thought process about it because I didn't even understand that I had a lack of clarity. I just experienced this is how life works. Before recovery, there was a lot of buzz in my head. There was a lot of chaotic thinking, obsessing about things, about my substance of no choice, the people pleasing, managing what other people were going to think of me, or at least trying to. So it was difficult to think with any kind of clarity, but I really didn't know that until all of that stuff was gone. For me, a huge gift of recovery is clarity in so many respects, including clarity of thinking. I can see things in a way that seems much more realistic now. 
because I'm not attributing all kinds of extraneous factors to things like blame. Because I lived in the world from just the point of view of my experience and didn't think it was okay to ask for questions or to ask questions and certainly not to ask for help. God forbid. I've learned from being in recovery that my perspective is not the only one and it's sometimes wrong. And so really being able to get other people's perspectives, mainly by reaching out and asking them for their perspective, for their experience, strength, and hope has been so helpful to me to get to clarity. When I was using, I did not have the clarity of thought to solve my problems in any reasonable kind of way. Clarity gives me more mental energy for problem solving me. It releases me from the gook in my brain, like the gook of judging other people, for example. And it's helped me to listen for God's will. Before recovery, my thinking was so clouded. I had all these illusions that I didn't even know I had until I really looked at them in doing the steps. Like if I was good, life should bring me no pain or that I could actually control people, places, and things. Or if I were clean and sober, all my problems would be solved. The 12 steps gave me hope and clarity to face my life one day at a time without using. Today, living in reality allows me to experience a wide spectrum of feelings and challenges. When I keep the 12 steps close at hand, I have a chance to experience the promises and the gifts of these programs. I gained clarity about the level of abuse and dysfunction I'd grown accustomed to. I realized that I have a choice of handling situations in an insane manner, such as cursing, shaming, and blaming, or a sane manner with feelings, prayer, and asking for help, among other things. I got clarity about my childhood in that I learned that my father was not doing things to me. He was doing things. And it wasn't about me personally. It was about the fact that he didn't know how to parent. He didn't understand childhood development. And he wasn't trained to be a parent. He was trained to pass on the dysfunction that was given to him. My parents operated from distorted thinking, that clouded reality in my home. Their confused thinking created behavior that was inconsistent and uncaring. So I came to believe that this behavior was normal when it was really insane. Another thing about clarity involves self-harm in its various forms. I somehow thought that using, being in dysfunctional relationships, engaging in dangerous or risky behavior, or ignoring red flags would result in me being happier and healthier. But the truth is... I have clarity now that all those things bring me pain and brokenness. So now that I have clarity, I don't tolerate abuse and dysfunction in my relationships any longer. And I'm able to live happy, joyous, and free one day at a time. That's it for today. If you like what you've heard here, then you just might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, head on over to my website, which is higherpowercoachingandconsulting.com and click on the contact menu. I'd be happy to schedule a consultation with you to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be sure to get future episodes of my podcast. Thanks again.